Hey, my name is Shanshan. I sell art on Shanshan.co. Today we're going to review Knock at the Cabin. So this is a film by M. Night Shyamalan. He's done a lot of really great films before. I think there was one in the woods that was really good. I can't think of the name off the top of my head, but that was excellent. Time is one hour, 40 minutes. Actors are Dave Bautista plays Leonard, Jonathan Groff plays Eric, one of the dads, Ben Aldridge plays the second dad, Andrew, Christine Koo plays their daughter, Wen, Nikki Amuka Bird plays Sabrina, Rupert Grint plays Redmond, Escape from <laughs> Harry Potter, Abby Quinn plays Ardian. So this guy couple is taking kind of a weekend getaway into a cabin to have really fun with their daughter and swim in the pond and relax and get away from it all and get away from the society that's cousin doesn't really accept them and the parents don't accept them and you know they got into a bar fight recently and just a lot of kind of drama with the city big life city and they just kind of want to relax in the mountains and just kind of recharge their batteries and then these four strangers show up at the door and then they're asking to get in and they're like oh my god who the hell are these people and they demand one of them sacrifices themselves <laughs> So it's really interesting because the gay couple comes up with this theory that, you know, all these people are suffering from some psychotic break and they got involved in some crazy newsletter online. They just went crazy online. It's kind of a dig at, you know, the people that get into, I would say, Twitter and the conspiracies there and, you know, all these different subgroups that have kind of formed online, especially with social media, really connected these kind of crazy theories together before there didn't really exist. Or these people were just really in the extreme minority and just then meet other people. But now there's whole groups of flat earthers and, you know, people that believe in Bigfoot and <laughs> the Loch Ness Monster and Bermuda Triangle and who knows what. Um, so it's pretty interesting that they have this kind of sideline as one of the theories. Uh, you have every minority represented in the film. So it's very Hollywood style of film to sell to any type of audience, which is okay. I guess it worked. I, you really get the feeling that this film was conceived during the really paranoia feel of the first year of covid probably 2021 maybe going into 2022 they filmed it in 2023 they're out of it when the movies released but you really get the feeling that it was formed during the paranoia of the covid ferry because all the mo hollywood was really locked down really severely in la it was one of the most severe lockdowns outside of say new zealand or australia had even worse lockdowns outside of china of course which went to the deep end so the really film kind of feels that paranoia of being locked down and following conspiracy theories and not believing what you see on the tv is a tv reel but you also have the four strangers using tv as proof that you know the end of the world is happening but you know all the people point out like oh this could just be bs who knows what you know so it's kind of like this battle between you know recently with the trump administration came in and said fake news right and everyone's like no that can't be true and then you started looking peeling back the onion you start discovering kind of quirkiness in the news like stories that they stick to that aren't true and you're like are they presenting the news are they presenting opinions or you know so the news i think with us especially with social media people started investigating much faster on their own and so news that would have kind of these stage stories were really kind of falling apart quickly and People started to really distrust the news, which is kind of sad because you could say in the 1970s during Walter Concrete era, there was a lot of trust in the news organizations and that's kind of fallen by the wayside completely. I know myself, I don't really follow the news at all anymore. I just consider it a waste of time, but <laughs> I do follow some business news here and there, but you know, the news they have on CNN or Fox or whatever, you're like, what are they talking about? Just totally craziness. I just watch it for entertainment value. So I think that's what's, you know, kind of translation to here where they're like, hey, trust the TV acres. They can't be making it up. It's like, no, they could have filmed it all, you know, especially with CG. And so that's kind of one of the interesting theories in the dads as they debate, like, who are these crazy people that are taking us hostage? And then you have this weird thing where the executioners start sacrificing themselves. <laughs> You know, like, dude, you're going to have, like, one or two people left. So once they get down to one person, they just rush and bum-rush them. Like, all right, dude, we're in control now. Screw this guy. So, you know, that was kind of really stupid by the hostages. Uh, these kidnappers, they kind of, you know, kill themselves off, which I guess is part of the plan. But it makes it very less scary as you get along once you get down to two people. And you're, like, two people guarding three. You're, like, eh, it's not too hard. All you have is metal weapons. I mean, I don't it's really... You know, I don't really see them as threatening. So that was kind of like really lessened out what happened in Act 3. You're just like, okay, is it really reality? Are they make believe from the TV news that they staged that? So it's kind of like, what's the reality? What's not at that point? I think a better way to sh film this. I like the tightness of the film of the hour and 40 minutes. So very tightly filmed. I think a better way to write this would have been to kind of show a little bit more on the lives of the four strangers that show up. You could have Dop. Dave Bautista bonding with the kids at his high school and playing ball and everything and then suddenly getting nightmares and then 
having the second person, she's a nurse, and then suddenly she gets, starts getting nightmares, and she's worried about her son, but then she abandons her son to go to this crazy place, and I think there was some cook that shows up, and maybe you could show her cooking and enjoying her life, and they kind of talk about it, but if they would have showed it with film footage, maybe add five minutes on each character and stretch this a little bit, maybe to two hours, I think it would have been way more shocking when they self-sacrifice themselves. It would have been way more impact wise. You just talk about, yeah, where are these people? And then we we can't believe it either, you know? <laughs> Like, it's just kind of unbelievable. So if you'd show them having the nightmares and their normal life, and then it would have made the story longer, but I think that would have made a, a much stronger film, I would say. More shocking when, you know, they self-sacrifice themselves. Overall, I think it's a, you know, it's a fun watch. I mean, it's just a one-watch thing because once the cat's out of the bag on the story, you're not going to be so surprised. They give a lot away of the story in the marketing, so it's not super shocking, the ending. That's what happens to a lot of films now. But, I mean, the film was pretty predictable where it was going as far as the beginning of the film you know they're probably going to escape somehow and so they had to sacrifice themselves so there wasn't really shocking it just kind of progressed as it progressed so it wasn't really a shocking twist turn of events so i think it was pretty good but you know it's just a one watch film if you guys like to subscribe you can subscribe below and i'll see you in the next movie room thanks for watching guys